Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen? Matthew here again. Welcome to the tutorial video for Hollyland Streamix. This is our first step in the switcher market and I'm really excited to show you how you may do switching, live streaming, and some camera control, and even internal recording all within this iPad-sized minimalistic device that you can take with you on the go. Time is money, my friends. Let's begin, shall we? Inside the box, you will get the Streamix unit, an Ethernet cable, DC adapter, and some Wi-Fi antennas. At the back of the unit, we have the power input, antenna connector, I.O. for tally lights, two SDI in, two HDMI in, one SDI and one HDMI out for the clean output, and a monitor output that would mirror everything you see on the StreamX screen to another screen for a better view. <laughs> it's funny cuz, for a better view happens to be our brand slogan. Well anyway, on the right side you have two XLR inputs and on the left two XLR outputs. My configuration here is two cameras connected to HDMI ports, a PTZ camera connected to an Ethernet port, and a clean HDMI out going to this video monitor. On the very top of the screen, we get the clock, available disk space, and real-time upload download speed. In main interface, we get to see what is currently on air, an overview of all the available signals, the option to record the outputs to the internal 256 gigabyte flash storage and the master volume control. For normal switching, you just tap on whichever content you want and StreamX will output that signal instantly. In the case of the IP camera, we have one connected right here. Not only can you switch to this signal, you can notice the little joystick icon here that would allow you to directly control the camera on the fly and there's almost no delay. This is this camera. This is this camera. And this is the PTZ. Look at that. Total easy control. Okay, this one might look goofy to you at first because the stock pictures are sort of nostalgic 2000s. But if you go to my pictures, you will see the custom imported picture here. Next, we have the scoreboard. I can choose one of the templates and customize almost everything of this board from the look of it, the titles, to the increments of the score depending on the game that I am live streaming. Last on this column is the audio channel config. I can activate all the channel audio together and mix them here, or just mute some of them. That's for the main control interface. Now, if we tap the gear icon on the top right, we are in the setting menu. In the setting menu, we get to set up everything that we would normally not change on the fly, like the audio video recording bit rate, streaming destinations, streaming frame rates, bit rate, resolution. This setting really depends on the network condition you are in. If you are streaming content online, stable and smooth streaming is the top priority. You may need to lower these settings to achieve smooth uploads. Here we are in the network setup, which supports both the Ethernet and Wi-Fi. But unless you have a super solid Wi-Fi environment, for stability we'd still strongly recommend using Ethernet. Here's something interesting. In the audio setting page, you get to turn on the denoising algorithm, which can be especially useful if it is getting the signal of an MC speaking in a loud environment. You can even set the threshold for the noise reduction to get the most optimal result. And we have a global analog volume setting here, the very useful audio delay feature to keep the picture and sound in sync, channel copy, which would turn one side of the stereo signal into a mono signal and audio follow. Live plus server setting. File transfer, aha, we're at this USB feature again. After the whole live streaming is done, if you have enabled content recording, then we would have freshly recorded files here. You connect an external hard drive and just do a simple copy and paste here to get the recordings out. Instead of using a hard drive, directly upload to an FTP server is also possible. Next, in the general settings, all the nitty gritty settings of the device like your time zone, 
project frame rate and fan speed. I'm really glad we got to set the fan speed ourselves because at 10% now it's barely audible. Great if the operator is also speaking to a mic like I am doing now. But in many cases you probably won't need to capture audio right next to the switcher. In that case you can just turn it back to higher speed for cooler runtime. The brightness. Very self-explanatory. The screen on Streamix has the brightness that's decent for most cases. But if you need to operate under bright sun, you will have to either get into a shade or just monitor with an ultra bright field monitor. Last but not least, we have the system info here. A great feature here is that you can just do firmware upgrade right in the menu so long as the Streamix is online and detects a new firmware available. From Hollyland. Alright ladies and gentlemen, this wraps up the tutorial video for the Hollyland Streamix. It's such a rich featured device but it's so intuitive and easy to use. If you have any questions regarding its usage, certain streaming compatibilities, or any question at all, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. Meanwhile, happy streaming and have a great day. Bye-bye.